Hello, Abby. Hi, Matt. It's that time again. Woohoo! Highlight of the week. Yeah, we've got more things to talk about. Do we? We do. Yeah. So today, I kind of wanted to go through、um, another one of your values. Okay. Because、um, I think these are really interesting ways to kind of people to have a bit more of an insight into you and the way that you're going to approach any challenges you have and kind of. I suppose where your values lie, because these are your values.、Mm-hmm. Um, and today, I wanted to talk about your value of、um, integrity. Okay.、Um, so this is something we've pulled out of conversations to build these values. Yeah. So what does what does integrity mean to you? I think I have always been an integral person,、mm-hmm. but when I joined the police, one of my、uh, forming. Memories was, you know, they said to us, if you if your integrity is ever called into question, you'll get the sack. And、uh, one of my colleagues, his integrity was called into question. Oh, okay. And he did get the sack. So it was、uh, <laughs> whatever I had felt about integrity before that really sort of hammered it home for me. And、uh, and being in the police as well is is quite a a, a job that is integrity driven、mm. or should be anyway. I know there are other issues there, but、um, so it, it is. It's always been really important to me to be honest and and transparent as well、okay. in my actions.、Um, and it's kind of exhausting lying, to be honest. <laughs> okay, <laughs> you have、yeah. to remember your lies and then、yeah. remember, remember. Like if you're just honest, you're just you don't have to worry about、yeah. that. You can just every single time you're just speaking your truth. So it's easier actually. Yeah. <laughs> To、yeah, have your、absolutely. integrity intact, and so that idea of like keeping your integrity is a thing of like following through with things you say you're going to do. Is it what 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 what's the action of integrity or being in having integrity? I think it's your whole narrative、mm-hmm. is is honest. So it's not like telling a little white lie here and okay, and、yeah. being a bit dishonest here and being a bit shady over here.、Mm. It's like your whole thing is like completely your integrity holds the whole thing together. Nice. And that, I suppose that consistency as well, like you're saying, it's easier just to be, to have integrity and keep that up. Versus, For me, it is.、Yeah. I don't know how people <laughs> don't do it. It's too tiring. Yeah,、that's... way too tiring. How do they do it? And also, you can tell,、mm. like you know, when someone's talking to you, and you're like, mm, mm. Mm. and you do you feel like you get a lot of that, and you've had a lot of that in your experience of everything you've kind of been through. I guess being in the police again,、mm. you. The whole job is like bringing people in for offences, and then you、yeah. interview them. So when you're interviewing them, you're trying to get to the truth always. Got to do a little bit of discerning. Oh, God, and, loads, yeah. yeah. So like, if if you're giving, if you're, you know, having an interview and and somebody <laughs> lying to you, you、uh, you probably catch on quite quick about、mm. you know. And why where is, the truth lies? Why is that value of integrity important going into politics? I think it's really important, isn't it? Um, I don't know how we could argue that it's not important.、Mm. Once we start building our foundations on lies, w- w- like the whole thing, there's、mm. no foundation there, is it? It's going to crumble, and we've got nothing. And I think we can quite easily see the lack of integrity at the moment. I think you can feel it. Yeah. So, and I, I think people can feel it. So when people say to you, "Oh no, politicians are all liars and、mm. slam the door" or whatever. Like really, they're watching the programs that politicians are on, and they can feel that they're not being honest and transparent. Yeah. So and it, it comes back to that kind of quality. Well, it, you you know, it's no wonder that that people come out with lines like that. Obviously, not all politicians lie, and、mm. they there are some very truthful politicians and honest politicians and good politicians. But then we have others that are not、uh, conducting themselves、mm. in that manner. And where do you think that? Sway potentially, politicians might come into their career with integrity and like having that as an aim. Well, I, just, I was just actually as we've just been chatting, I was with the police. There was a consequence to your lack of integrity,、mm. and the thing with politicians and government is where there doesn't seem to be any consequence. So、mm. you know, we we our police force we conduct it on on this in under this framework, but we don't in our politics. So our politics can lie and cheat and. Be and dishonest,、no、and where are the consequences?、Mm. And that makes people cross because it's like, where's the justice with that? Like, we all have to live our lives. Yeah, COVID is a good example,、mm-hmm. where we they were instructed by the government to live a certain way,、uh, 
a very specific and restrictive way. But yeah, our politicians were not living in that way. Yeah, very true. So it's kind of double standards. Very double standards. And people get annoyed by that. Mm. And I suppose that's another thing with the lack of integrity uh, also comes like hypocrisy. Yeah. Um, and the idea that people are being told to do one thing by the government. Yeah, there's the... nothing worse, is there, than, yeah. than, you, than somebody telling you to do something and then you can see them living in the exact opposite way. Yeah, and... It's like, well, why should I do it? Yeah, <laughs> You're yeah, not doing exactly. it. <laughs> and it's, I think people can see it's almost it's just blatant. Yeah, it's, disregard, it's disrespectful as mm. well, isn't it? Again, back to that respect thing. It's like, well, you're not respecting me enough to just go by what you're you're saying yourself. Mm. Like, why why would you not be like that? And is this an issue that's coming up on the doors as well? The issue is that a lot of people are saying on the door that they are so discouraged by what's happening in our politics right now that they don't want to vote. Okay. And I think maybe we touched on this in another podcast. So people feel like they can't believe in anyone anymore Mm. and they were really and that's a struggle for me because I'm a different person coming in trying to get past that and to say actually well yeah you're you're right I get it and we have been led by that way of working in our politics for a while and so you kind of automatically tainted like tarred by the same brushes yeah yeah definitely definitely tarred So it's like trying to get into a conversation long enough to say maybe we can do things differently moving Mm. forward. And with people that you talk to on the door is, I think integrity always comes up and and you kind of said that people feel like they're not getting the truth out of politicians. Like are there something like a different agenda or Mm -hmm. is anything kind of like that talked about? I think people are looking for leadership as Mm. well. So they're really looking for someone that they can put their faith in and mm. hope in. So trust trust and honesty comes first. That's yep. where the relationship is built. And then what they're looking for is somebody to say, right, and this is now we've got our foundation sorted and now I'm going to lead you in this way. Mm. But because we haven't got this stage sorted, we can't move to how we're going to, you know, yeah. a politician or a group of politicians who are going to lead us in a new in a direction, any direction. Yeah. So having trust in someone representing you is really key. Yeah, I mean, think about it from a relationship point of view, like us as friends, if I found out you had been lying to me, like that would put our friendship in jeopardy. Mm. If you had a partner and you found out they had been, um, they hadn't been truthful with you, it would, it shocks the relationship, doesn't it? Yeah, I suppose that's really interesting as well, thinking about in, in those kind of terms as well, because you've got to have a relationship built, built on trust. Yeah. And that's the exact same premise that as a voter, you're voting someone in, trusting that they're going to make yeah. a situation better or represent your voice and when that doesn't but happen, they are who they say they are mm, so there's a little bit of um uh kind of being scarred from previous experiences yeah yeah yeah, yeah. you put your trust unfortunately yeah so that's a really interesting thing of you kind of um, and i would say other politicians do this as well mm-hmm. but coming in with like one of your main values as like maintaining that integrity um for me it's not a problem yeah it's one of my core values you that you cannot have take to work out at this. i don't have to work at this <laughs> i'd have to work at lying yeah i'd have to work really hard to become a liar um so it would it, I'd, it fundamentally shift who i am as a person and i would say it's impossible now at this stage so i was going to ask how do you keep that integrity up in politics? But obviously <laughs> for me no problem you're not so maybe a better question is like how do you how do you get others to maintain integrity? I think you lead by example. Mm-hmm. So I think what's really appealing whenever I've worked with a group of people is that you're naturally drawn to people who are enthusiastic, mm-hmm. who are leaders, who are have their integrity intact, who you can trust, who you are drawn to. And I think that's really appealing. So if you have somebody like that in a situation where you're working... People are drawn to that mm. and inspired by it and then adopt it as their own behaviours. Mm-hmm. So for me, it would be leading by example and then hopefully that filters into the mm. culture of the organisation. I think that's a really interesting point as well because a part of kind of this campaign as well is obviously you being a good candidate, but also symbolically getting in and sending a shockwave through. So just by you being there and kind of being voted in 
based on these values of integrity and all these really important things, kind of sends a message that that's what people want. Definitely. That is what people are saying. That's what they want. Mm. And that's all informed. And that's what I say on the door. Exactly. Mm. So that's what I say on the door. If you vote for me, this is what you're voting for. And this is what I will say in government. And and it's that simple. It's not it's not complicated. It's mm. not I'm not making any promises that I can't keep or not deliver on. You know, I don't know what I can and can't deliver in government. I don't know what it's going to look like. A lot of things I don't mm. know the detail. You're not making false promises. Don't want to make any false promises. Mm. Don't want to lead people astray. And that, as uh, potentially silly as it sounds, seems like quite a... Um, it shouldn't be, but it's quite a, a new, exciting <laughs> yeah. idea. Yeah, it is an exciting... Because a lot of people on the door say, well, you know, what's your policies? What's your manifesto? Mm. What's this... It's like, if I form that, then I I am bound by it to deliver it. And I don't know if I can do that yet. Mm. And also, I'm an independent. I'm just one person. So this is what I know I can deliver and I will deliver. And we're talking about a culture change. Mm. And I think there's something interesting in here as well, where the integrity of also owning the fact that you don't have all the answers. Yeah, I think it's really important. It's annoying when politicians yeah. say we've got all the answers. Well, if you had all the answers, why are we? Why can't we get a dentist appointment or a doctor's yeah. appointment or get a bus or? Yeah, exactly, and all the systemic issues that are kind yeah. of going on. And... Why can I not heat my house? Why can I not pay mm. my mortgage? If you've got all the answers, why? Why is that the case now? Whereas actually, there's something in in what you're doing where knowing that you don't have the answers, that's not your. That's almost not your place. Your place is to fas- fas- to facilitate people with the answers, the experts, yeah. to listen to them and inform that decision. So another thing on the door is, is that people expect you to have all the answers. And they could say, I'm brave, you know, you're so brave for running. Like, I'm always a bit bamboozled by that. Like, why am, why am I brave? Like, it's not me against you. It's you coming along this journey with me. Mm. We're doing this together. I always see that in the way I conduct uh, what I'm doing now is that I'm bringing the whole constituency along this journey with me. It's not me against the constituency. Mm. I need them. I need everybody yeah. to come along this journey with me. We're doing it together. So if we're going to find solutions in our communities, we're going to do it together. Mm. And that, that's the same approach to anything. Everything. Mm. I like it a lot. <laughs> it, it's really interesting because this idea of um, integrity seems like it should be a given. Yeah. That people should, especially politicians... Because they are under more uh, scrutiny than other people. Yes. Yeah, yeah. They're under a lot of pressure. And I think when, when we're under that sort of pressure and you're fearful, you go to your primal instincts, I think. Mm-hmm. And you, you're you not... There's All the creativity goes, all of the free-flowing, you know, where we can actually... So because I see them in a battle, such a, an intense battle, they are just going to their primal state. Mm survival really they're not there's no creative thinking about yeah. it's it's all disappeared you because can't, they're you just can't creatively thinking fear. They're just in a battle yeah, yeah yeah and that i suppose that's a really interesting thing as well because you're trying to cultivate it seems like you're trying to cultivate a um an approach where no one has to be in fear mm-hmm. there's no pressure on people to know everything or an individual to know everything because there is a mass amount of people with skills knowledge experience yeah, that can yeah. inform all those things yes yeah and we want to appeal we want this uh we want to have mps with all sorts of skills we want mm. to appeal to all sorts of people and have all sorts of skills in parliament we don't want to it feels like we're reducing the skill set to be like right you really do have to just be this tough person who doesn't mm. mind arguing all the time yeah like so, so it becomes really exclusive again doesn't it yeah and that kind of the idea that all that being the same we've got one kind of voice coming through which tends to be a toxic warring uh, yeah uncollaborative voice is only ever gonna produce more of that on my journey around the parishes, I went to a particular parish council and there was a young girl on this parish council and I really felt like she would be a great MP in mm. the future. And I said it to her, I was like, you, you're an MP for the future. And she was like, oh, she was like, she could see where I was coming from. And there was a part of her that was like, got excited. But then the other part of her 
was like, oh no, but I can't. I've had so much in my life that's been really horrible. I just can't, I just can't do it. So we have already framed that being a politician and being an MT, mm. MP is like the most toxic, horrible yeah. job. But I don't want it to be like that. I want her to be like, oh wow, yeah, I could be an MP and yeah. I could bring all my skills in and wouldn't it be great? And All the lived experience. Oh yeah, all of that yeah. stuff. So she sees it as a really toxic, because it is, it's a really toxic place. But we don't want it to be like that. We want people to look at our government and be proud and, mm. and say, wow, look at all of this creative conversation that's going on where we're finding really positive solutions. That's really exciting. So it's accessible for other people yeah. to come in after me. And I'd be looking all the time to pass that baton on. I don't want to stay there for, mm. you know, my, my as we talked in a previous podcast, I'm in five-year blocks. Yeah. I might only be there for one term. <laughs> yeah. And then I'll pass the button on to the next person. I think it's great. I think, it, again, it speaks to more of the collaborative idea that um, no single person is the hero that's going to save no. all. It's all of us kind of coming together. And again, coming back to this idea of integrity, ensuring that um, it's done with that as a starting point. Yeah. It seems like that's the only way or that way. Let's can... get our foundations right. Yeah, exactly. Love it. <laughs> well, that was, again, always ending in poetry. Um, that was a, a lovely chat. Um, again, uh, keep on listening to the uh, the podcast and reach out via the website. Um, and we'd love to hear from you. Yeah, we would. <laughs> Bye-bye, everyone. <laughs>